Jan Clayton, Tommy Rettig, George Cleveland, with John Provost as Timmy, and of course, Lassie. Timmy, why don't you go out and play, honey? Nobody to play with. Lassie's with Jeff. Well, surely you can find something to occupy yourself. If I just take a dog, all of my own, I'd never be lonely. One dog in this house is quite enough. Besides, Lassie is with you more than she is with Jeff. But she still doesn't belong to me. Oh, we're home. Oh, hi, dear. Hi. Hi, Miss Miller. Hi, Timmy. Corky. You find what you want in the icebox. Oh, thanks a lot, Miss Miller. Well, you're the greatest. How'd you know we were starved? Just a wild guess. Yeah, was. Jeff, are you going to be using Lassie for the next couple of hours? What do you mean, use her? For company. Timmy means can't you spare Lassie so that he can play with her? Oh, sure. Porky and I have some stamp trading to do. After we eat. Gee, thanks. Come on, Lassie. Oh, we're going to go for a walk. All right, sweetheart. Don't go too far. We won't. Come on, Lassie. Pretty flowers, Lassie. Smell. I wish you were mine. Come on, Lassie.
here and don't make a sound. Glad to have you. She went walking right past us with a big bone in her mouth. Didn't even stop to look at us. Don't you know that a bone is far more attractive to Lassie than you are, Porky? There's more to eat on, Porky. Oh, easy now, Porky. We have a rule in this house. You can clobber someone at dinner or supper, but you can't touch them at breakfast. You start off the day with peace and love. Well, now, that's a splendid idea, and I don't see why it can't continue throughout the day. Drink your milk, Timmy. Peace and love all day? Too monotonous. <laughs> May I be excused? Did you finish your milk? No, he didn't. Now, Timmy has a tongue, Porky. Finish your milk, honey, and then you may be excused. Gramps thinks there was a wolf in the yard last night. He said he in a trap for him. No kidding? Boy, would I like to see a wolf. In a trap, maybe. Not face to face. Oh, I'd tear him apart. What's that? Oh. oh, what is it? It's mine. May I see him, Timmy? No, it's mine. I found it. What is it? It's a puppy. <laughs> and Ellen, I found it all by myself. Well, good. It looks like an African flea hound or something. May I hold him for a minute, Timmy? If you promise to give it right back. I promise. <laughs> and on, may I keep him? Oh, dear, I don't know. I think one dog is enough. But Lassie isn't my dog. And this one is. Timmy, this isn't a dog. It is, so I'll give it back. Well, wait a minute. No, give it back. And Ellen, make him give me my puppy. Give it back to him, Jeff. But, Mom, give it to him. Mom, that's no dog puppy. He's 
a wolf cub. What? We can't let him live. Grant will want to drown him for sure. I'd better tell him. Jeff, are you positive that's a wolf cub? Of course I'm positive. I could tell by his eyes. That's how come the tracks were out here. There's the female coming after her cub. What if she comes back? You can bet she will, as soon as it gets dark. I'll go tell Gramps. I'm not gonna give you up. Not ever. You never hurt anybody. Jimmy, may I come in, please? Yes, ma'am. Did you ever see a picture of a full-grown wolf? There's a picture of one here in the Book of Knowledge. You see? Well, you have seen grown lions and tigers, though, haven't you? Remember when you went to the zoo? Well, what did you think of them? They scared me. <laughs> Imagine they did. They're very frightening when they're grown up. Did you ever see them when they were young? Well, they're just as sweet and gentle as they can be. Just like this little cub here. But they change, Timmy. They grow up. And then they kill other animals. And sometimes they even attack human beings. But the Grinch wants to drown him. And he never hurt anybody. But he will, Timmy. That's the point. You see, wolves are just natural born enemies of man. What did Gramps say? Well, same thing I did. He'll have to be drowned. But first he wants to trap the female. This seems like an awfully cruel thing to do. They're wolves, Mom. It'd be different if he was a rabbit or a raccoon. I know. While you were gone, I went in and tried to talk to Timmy, but he just can't understand. He asked me a question that you asked me not so many years ago. What was that? Why are wolves born if they have to be drowned? Why are they? When did I ask that? Well, not about wolves, about kittens. You remember when Lassie found some little kittens and brought them home and Grants wanted to drown them? Oh, yes. Well, that was different, Mom. Kittens aren't wolves. They don't grow up to kill sheep and sometimes people. Mm, it's still pretty hard for a little boy of seven to quite understand why one of God's creatures has to be destroyed. It's hard for me, too. Haven't you ever heard of the balance of nature? Well, I've heard of it, but I don't know what it means. Sure. Miss Miller? Yes, Jim. Could you explain it to me? Explain what? Well, you know, the balance of nature and why you have to drown little wolf cubs. Well, I can try. You see, Porky, everything in nature has a life cycle. That is, it's Born, it lives, and it dies. You understand that, don't you? Oh, sure. If mosquitoes never died, in two years there'd be enough mosquitoes to eat up all the people. I read that in the book. That's right. Well, it's the same with people. Some die in order to make room for others to be born. That's the balance that nature keeps. She gets rid of the old in order to make room for the new. Yeah, but the wolf cub isn't old. It's just a baby. Well, that's a, that's a different thing. Gramps and Jeff feel that the wolf should be destroyed because he might grow up to be a menace. That's a matter of man protecting himself against a wild beast. Oh, Jeff. Yes? I think it might help if you talk to Timmy. Well, I have to take this ball of twine to Gramps. I'll take it. Here. What'll I tell him? Oh, you know what to tell him. Just, just have a man-to-man -man talk. Okay. Timmy. Who is it? Jeff, may I come in? If you wanna. You're not mad at me, are you, Timmy? If you wanna draw my puppy, I am. Well, he's not really a puppy, Timmy's a, a wolf. But he's a baby, and he's mine. Oh, 
I know what it means to you to want to have a pet of your own. I was like that when I was your age, too. But you got Lassie. Well, Lassie's practically your dog, aren't you, girl? <laughs> but she still doesn't belong to me. Well, you know, Timmy, this fall I'll be going to a big city high school. And I'll have a lot more homework, and I won't get home till a lot later. I probably won't have enough time for Lassie like I do now. In fact, she'll be more your dog then than she will mine. She'll be practically all yours. Honest? You'll be my dog, Lassie. What about him? I'm afraid you have no choice with him, Timmy. In a couple of months, he'll be a very dangerous animal. He'll grow big and strong enough to kill Lassie should they get in a fight. But, but they'll be friends. You can't trust a wild animal like that, Timmy. That's why Gramps is wanting to get rid of him now before he becomes dangerous. He doesn't look like he'd hurt anything to me, ever. Well, I have to admit, he doesn't look that way to me either. But you can bet he will. But, but we just can't drown him. Well, what do you have to find him for, anyway? He's probably right with his mother where he should be, and you should have left him there. I told you before, there are no two ways about it, and that's that. I guess it's my fault. You should be with your mother. You sure had your nerve going back to that wolf's lair. I knew she wouldn't hurt me, because I'd bring her baby back. I'd better tell Gramps to pick up that trap. That female won't be back around here. She might. She might come back to say hello to me and Lassie. <laughs> Timmy. Timmy. Do you know something? What? I'm very, very proud of you. Why? Because you're a real solid citizen. What does that mean? Means you're a good boy, because you didn't want Gramps to drown that little wolf cub. He was too cute and cuddly. Yeah. But you understood that he might grow up to be bad. And yet you took him back to his mother to give him a chance to live his life up. And I love you for it. I love you too, Aunt Ellen. Mm, good. And now, if my favorite dog will take my favorite little boy in to wash up, I'll give them both a nice oatmeal cookie, husband. <laughs>
starring Jan Clayton, Tommy Rettig, George Cleveland, with John Provost as Timmy, and of course, Lassie. Timmy, why don't you go out and play, honey? Nobody to play with. Lassie's with Jeff. Well, surely you can find something to occupy yourself. If I just had a dog all of my own, I'd never be lonely. One dog in this house is quite enough. Besides, Lassie is with you more than she is with Jeff. But she still doesn't belong to me. Oh, I'm home. Oh, hi, dear. Hi. Here's my hi, Timmy. Corky. You find what you want in the ice box. Oh, thanks a lot, Miss Miller. Well, you're the greatest. How'd you know we were starved? Just a wild guess. Jeff, are you going to be using Lassie for the next couple of hours? What do you mean, use her? For company. Timmy means can't you spare Lassie so that he can play with her? Oh, sure. Porky and I have some stamp trading to do. After we eat. Gee, thanks. Come on, Lassie. Oh, we're going to go for a walk. Lassie, you're scaring him. Don't be afraid, little puppy. Are you lost? How would you like to be mine? I don't have a dog all of my own. Stop it! You're jealous, that's all. I found him and he's mine. And I'm gonna take him home. I remember. And Ellen said one dog in this house is enough. But I won't tell anybody yet. I'll hide him. Oh, you're mine. Don't go too far. We won't. 
yours, Lassie. Smell. I wish you were mine. 